On September 27, left New Caledonia in company with the Minneapolis and five destroyers and three transports, headed northeast. On October 1, we took over Funafuti Island. That is part of the Elise Islands. Stayed in vicinity two days. Headed toward northern end of New Caledonia. Have empty transports in company. No opposition in landing our troops and equipment. Underway for three days, arrived in Espiritu Santo, New Hebrides, with the Minneapolis. The harbor was full of ships. Half of our warships left the next morning. We anchored close to the Minnesota. On October 11, 1942, Admiral Wright and Flag Administration came aboard the Chester for duty. The Minnesota left for Pearl Harbor. On October 13, the force we are in came in port after having contacted enemy close to the Solomons. We sank one heavy cruiser and three destroyers, and our damages consisted of one destroyer hit and the Boise badly damaged, nothing sunk. On October 16, we left Espiritu Santo in the early morning, headed with task force directly for Guadalcanal. Our opposing force was much stronger than we were, so we retired and just patrolled the area around Guadalcanal. We were within 50 miles on various occasions. Continued patrolling until October 20th. On the evening of the 20th, us and the three cans left formation to go to Espiritu Santo for refueling. We were making 19 knots and at 9.27 p.m. there was a terrific explosion. We were hit amidships on the starboard side by a torpedo. All lights went out. Our engines stopped. We were laying dead in the water trying to get our engines started again. Very dangerous. Casualty, 14 dead, 15 injured. The dead were buried ashore. The moon was so bright that some of our fellows were playing cards on topside. Finally, we were able to make three knots. Then, about midnight, all engines again stopped. We laid there for four hours before again getting underway. The fire room where we were hit was completely flooded. If one more inch of salt water had come in contact with the hot boilers, it would have exploded. That meant our doom. But when the water was one inch from them, our suction pump started working, saved. We proceeded slowly back to Espiritu Santo and arrived October 23. On October 25, the Jap fleet was within range of this place and it was feared that they would attack. All ships left harbor but us. We were unable to get away due to minor repairs being made so we could make the necessary trip back to the Navy Yard in the States. Planes kept coming and going all night long and of course the tension of this one crippled ship was overwhelming. Everything okay. On October 26, the ship started coming back in the harbor and the transport loaded down with soldiers, the President Coolidge, hit one of our own mines and sank at the entrance of the harbor in 30 minutes. Most all hands were rescued. At least our own mines work. On the night of October 26th had quite a scare as a Jap sub snuck in the harbor but was sunk before he did any damage. On the 27th we left in company with two destroyers for Sydney. Made seven knots most of the time. In rough waters, only four was made. At several different times, everyone thought the ship was breaking in two. Sure were a lot of weird sounds coming from below. Finally arrived in Sydney, Sunday, November 9th at 10.57. People were cheering and waving from windows and housetops as we entered. Sure are a friendly bunch of blokes. After seven weeks in Sydney, with Liberty practically every night, we departed on Christmas Day. Headed for the States, Norfolk. In company with us is a can, the Clark. While in Sydney, the New Orleans came in with 100 feet of her bow gone. The Portland came in with 100 feet of her stern gone. 
The Northampton was sunk with only 200 survivors saved. On December 30, we anchored at Tutula, Samoa to refuel. Stayed in Samoa eight hours and started east again. Arrived at Bora Bora, Tahiti at 0800. Refueled and left at 1600. Crossed the equator again on January 9. Entered Balboa, Canal Zone on January 17th at 1600. Stayed until 0900 on the 18th. Then started through channels and docks. Takes eight hours. Arrived at Cologne at 1700. Tied up at dock and liberty was granted. Arrived in Norfolk the 25th of January, 1943.